Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here with us. This is the Thrive Bites podcast, and welcome to season five. Here we talk about three things, plant-powered living, enhancing emotional resilience, and creating a thriving mindset. And I interview the most passionate guests here, ranging from physicians to coaches to dietitians to entrepreneurs. And my hope is to give you really informative and high-valued conversations. So please Follow us here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you hear your podcasts. Come on in, and I can't wait to see you inside. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Thrive Bites. Um, I'm your host, Dr. Colin Zhu. And uh, for today's episode, I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Elizabeth Fontaine. And uh, she is a board certified practicing physician of OBGYN and lifestyle medicine. And um, I interview her in terms of physical activity, um, her love of, you know, just the sports, um, running, uh, she cycles, um, and she does a little bit of skiing as well, are her love. And she uh, gives us and shares some stories about how she got started, um, how her beginnings actually started in exercise physiology um, and obesity. Um, and uh, yeah, she gives us really, really uh, cool insights in terms of, you know, what do adults uh, need to know in terms of physical activity guidelines? What do pregnant women need to know um, as being a practicing OBGYN? And uh, yeah, it's a great episode. And great. And guess what? She demonstrates for us. Um, uh, from her home um, on how to incorporate certain movements um, into um, uh, at home as well if you don't have access to gym. So it's a great episode. Definitely stay tuned. Okay, guys. Well, welcome to another episode of Thrive Bites. I'm your host, Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here with us. You could be anywhere in the world, and you decided to share a few moments with us today, and I'm very, very, very grateful. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our next podcast uh, speaker guest. Um, her name is Dr. Elizabeth Fontaine, and I am super stoked um, to introduce uh, you guys to her. Um, and I quote, coaching a village to health starts with proper nutrition, um, a whole uh, plant-based diet. And uh, she is a double board certified OBGYN and lifestyle medicine uh, specialist. She's a fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, and her pre-medical background has been in obesity management and exercise physiology. And while she's practicing as an OBGYN, she sees her patients grow more unhealthfully, um, and she's imp implemented a program focused on lifestyle modifications with amazing results. She's directed several um, CHIP programs or complete health improvement programs um, in terms of learning Learning modules, and um, it's a program designed to prevent, slash, reverse, and treat chronic disease with an emphasis on whole food plant based to improve lifestyle and sustain this healthy behavior. And she started a lifestyle medicine clinic and became the medical director um, of it um, at a community hospital and is a founding member of Rise uh, Vermont or VT. Um, and I definitely want to ask her more about that. A community collaborative embracing healthy lifestyles. And she's just a very passionate and driven person. Um, and I cannot wait to introduce. Please welcome Dr. Elizabeth. Hello. <laughs> hey. So nice to hear all these amazing things about me. Now we're <laughs> going to stay. You said it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we got to, it, it's like, it's like introducing superheroes, you know, it's like, you know, you see them in their caves and you see them in their regalia, all their colors. And, you know, that, 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 you know, that uh, Superman pose and with their chests out. And, you know, I'm just very, very, um, uh, very proud of introducing my guests. So yeah. if I can do it in, you know, if I had a super cool like movie trailer voice, I could do that too, you know, so. <laughs> you, got a good, you got a good voice. You got that low, nice voice. I like it. <laughs> well, Dr. Liz, uh, thank you so much for being here um, with us, uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, where are you calling from? I'm in Vermont. Did you see my friend there? When it was the other side. I'm looking. It's <laughs> my friend. You're I give her, this is my kid that what well, you know my kids are not kids anymore but I kept it and I'm like oh my gosh this is center stage <laughs> <laughs> is that one of your uh, uh children's it, uh well it, it was one of my children that had it but now I keep it in my gym so that mm -hmm. I, I still mm -hmm. have some uh you know the reminders <laughs> he's my he's my coach you know you'll see there's a couple but now I'm, I didn't realize that you could see it so that's so yeah cool. yeah 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 that's cool that's cool 
Um, yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for coming on, um, again. And, uh, yeah, so we are talking about, we're delving deeper, um, into physical activity, into fitness. Um, but before we go into that, and I know that you have a wonderful demonstration, uh, planned out, which I'm super, super stoked with. Um, let's go back to the beginning. Um, in terms of, if you can give us a snapshot on, you know, what motivated you to, uh, be you know, become an OBGYN specialist? And then how in the world did you incorporate, you know, lifestyle medicine um, as part of that, um, uh, that whole armamentarium um, of, a, of a specialty? Because, you know, at first glance, it doesn't seem like it would go hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, for someone like yourself, that's led such a professional career, you know, there was something about it that made you stop, think about it, you know, invest, research, learn, and then take on not just being, you know, certified in it, you also ultimately became a fellow. So you've done so much work in it. So let's start there, you know, let's start on, you know, how you got into melding those two together. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, you know, you kind of gave a little bit at the beginning, what did I do? So first of all, my accent is from Quebec. So I'm French Canadian, and I've been I've been in Vermont now for 28 years. So everything started um, when I was studying kinesiology. This is prior to med school and then uh, ending up doing a master's degree in exercise physiology and obesity, which brought me to medical school, which you probably would think, hmm, why didn't you go in sports medicine? And I did research that. And I, I actually had a friend who was a physician, sports medicine. And uh, it's while I was with him that I realized that uh, those um, individuals don't listen too much to, <laughs> to the doctor uh, when we tell them to stop exercising. And for any reason, it, you know, it, it wasn't clicking at the time. It was not really what I wanted. You know, it's like if lifestyle medicine would have been there, maybe that would, but it, was, it, it wasn't existing at the time. So I went to uh, OBGYN. And uh, I practiced for um, a good number of years before um, it, it really started to um, trigger the interest. I mean, you have your patient that grow older with you. So, and you can see them developing some um, health issue, chronic disease like high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, um, diabetes. And then as a typical specialist, you send them back to their a primary care physician, and they would often come back with medication. Nothing wrong with primary care, but I knew that I could potentially help them by, and I knew probably more about exercise, but I wasn't too bad about, um, you know, uh, nutrition as well, probably knew a little bit mm -hmm. more than the majority of physicians. And that's how I researched uh, and decided the time that I was going to, I started doing some of my own program. I built my own program, The Better You, and I had lots of employees. And eventually by researching, I found the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which was pretty early at the time. It was about 12 years ago. So mm. there was about 200 people at the first conference. Now we what, five, 6,000 and more. Um, this, this is really much bigger now. Um, so by learning with the lifestyle medicine, then when I went to my first conference, I discovered a lot more than I was expecting, like with people like Essence to Dean Ornish that demonstrate the plant food base, the impact. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. There's a lot of things I didn't know. So when I came back uh, to Vermont, I, I choose a group of 20 people and I put them and say, okay, we're going to do a 21 day. And then this is how things started. So I kind of meld the two things that I liked the most. It was, you know, the exercise, which has always been a passion. And then knowing a little bit more about the plant base and then lifestyle, which just what came all mm. together. Is nice, this, this nice. So you pretty much, it sounded like you took your own cohort and, you know, did some quote unquote, I guess, lifestyle, you know, uh, experimenting, you know, just to kind of apply it to a population, um, you know, and see if it not only just work, you know, how can I run with it? You know, uh, how can I flourish with it? Um, yeah. did you, did you, you, because being, you know, OBGYN, did you, was your, uh, demographics mainly pregnant, you know, women, did you start experimenting with that or was it just anyone? No, uh, I didn't start with the pregnant. I start with the I start with a nurse on OB. 
I, I went to see them at a meeting and said, I was thinking about doing a program to try to help. Is there anybody that would like to participate? And everybody lived there. <laughs> yeah. Every one of them, I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'll <laughs> have enough people that wants to participate. But when I did on uh, the plant based, when I came back from the conference, these were not only women. I, I didn't select, I, you know, I wanted to have a group. So there was men. Uh, and uh, women that participate in the um, program. Mm -hmm. And this was funny because this was during Thanksgiving. They didn't like me that time because now you suddenly change completely what they Mm -hmm. were used to. And they survived, and the results were just amazing. It's good to have research, but if I had come home with saying, hey, did you see the literature, Dean Ornish, people in, in the rural Vermont would probably wouldn't be as impressed as if I was taking a group and just showing the result. That had a much um, bigger impact. Nice, nice. No, for sure. If there, I think there's a lot to say when you could do it, um, especially in a pure, you know, in a pure setting where you could educate, you can demo, you can do workshops, right? And like you said, if you have you know, just more tangible results and people can see it and they can look at their neighbor and be like, wow, you know, um, you know, my peers have been able to, you know, reduce their cholesterol, reduce their blood pressure, get off of certain medications. Um, It's much more of a, it's much more of a impression, you know? Um, And I know that. Yep. And uh, what was your experience with uh, the CHIP program like? Well, the CHIP program, it's an amazing program. At the beginning, when I did it, it was pretty early. It's a little bit more complicated to be able to, I guess for the physician, is the payment model is a little bit complex, mm. uh, which yeah. is a little bit better. Uh, but their course are just uh, really well done. So much uh, nice uh, video. Then we, yeah. like a group visit, then you have mm. the chance to speak with the group the only thing is that it's longer and sometimes people kind of get losing their interest. Uh, mm-hmm. and, but the, the result um, it is, again, amazing. Once people yeah. understand the impact of a plant food base, and some of them, once they've done it for a couple of weeks, like a habit. Mm-hmm. It's not that mm-hmm. difficult, you know. I'm not saying that they're all 100%, but a lot of them say, not as difficult as I thought this was going to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. I recently had uh, Dr. Ted Barnett um, come on the show, and he was explaining his program um, from the Rochester group. Um, Can you, you know, uh, how much of a difference um, is that, you know, uh, if you can just speak uh, about a little bit about the process for for CHIP so people have an idea? Uh, to see what, well, the chip, the, the chip is, is like I mentioned, a little bit longer. So they're going to see every session will be easily um, an hour and sometimes a little bit Mm. more. So of of a visualization of a video and then sitting with the group, there's no exercise or anything. It's just discussion. So there's Mm. all Mm. these topics that are seen. And usually it's about 12 weeks. You can do Mm. it in nine weeks, depending how you want to do it. Mm. So that's, that's a little bit longer, but tons of information. And and then you lose people sometimes because it's a little Mm. bit too long. The yeah. uh, Don't Stop program with the Rochester is that anybody can do something in two weeks. And surprisingly, mm-hmm. if you do it well and you really do the, the, the low fat like they're suggesting in the whole plan base, you can still see a very significant result. So for yeah. that reason, it's much easier for me to convince, let's say, somebody who's never done uh, plan based uh, to be initiated to this program with the uh, shorter version um, with the um, the uh, jumpstart. Plus, uh, I have to admit, it's I consider this program being very cheap. It, it, they're 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 amazing, good class, yeah. and not very costly. Yeah, not very costly. It's very it's open to basically anyone. Um, you know, a lot of us physicians, healthcare professional uh, f- professionals also join as well because you know we in the lifestyle medicine you know realm um, we are very aware that we are role models and you know community leaders and people look up to us and you know the act of participation right of how holding you know ourselves you know accountable and I think that when you don't practice lifestyle medicine on your own um, it's harder you know and um, you know doctors. Uh, you know, doctor wellness is very, very important, you know, and taking care of yourself is, 
you know, it's not a new concept, but it's a it's a newer thing to implement and integrate into our schedules because the physician, you know, is super busy taking care of patients, taking care of admin and paperwork and meetings and, you know, everything in between running a practice sometimes. Right. And so it's a nice reminder. And I'm glad that, you know, Ted Barnett is such a great leader in terms of, you know, implementing that as well. And um, I know CHIP is a phenomenal program, yeah. successful program. So. Um, so speaking of activity, uh, physical activity, um, you've done so much in terms of, you know, um, having that background of exercise physiology, and you were also implemented in your own life in terms of physical activity. So what, um, what is your go-to form of exercise and how long you've been doing it? And, you know, how did you get into it? That's a good question. So you knew that today was Boston Marathon. Did you know that? No, no, thanks for <laughs> and, you know, because my brother, whom I I many years ago I encouraged him when I start doing that. I encouraged my brother to start um running and we ran marathon together, but he was there. This guy's about 70. Mm. He still ran his marathon in 335. That's not wow. bad for his age. And his son uh was there as well, and he did in 256. So this is a little bit where it's, it's pretty good. But when you know, you you, you run. You know I mean, like it. anything under four is like amazing. <laughs> yeah. So this is how it started. So 1976, we had Montreal Olympic Games. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. However, I watched it quite a bit. And I, I guess the track and field was just something that amazed me. So I look at them and that day I said, I'm going to start running. Believe it or mm. not, I haven't stopped since that time. This wow. is where everything started. It was just like start running, crossing the bridge. It wasn't too far, coming back, one mile, two mile, five miles. And I ran marathon too. Um, and, and eventually, uh, you know, didn't have as much time for the marathon. So I switch. I, what I do more now, because there's an evolution to everything you do. I do a lot of biking and it's mm -hmm. mainly for traveling. So every mm -hmm. year... COVID uh, year and forget uh, these two years, um, but every year a couple of weeks of uh, traveling in Europe, a different country could be Spain, uh, France, uh, uh, just traveling with a group from Quebec. Actually, we go about 30 and we just travel. So that's my uh, way to encourage myself to stay in good shape because it, these travel are not easy. When I'm going flat, pay, it's, it's good here. So it's uh it's my way to try to maintain the good uh, health. And I ski in the winter, so I usually go somewhere to do some downhill ski. Um, mm -hmm. to, so you gotta, you got to keep in shape. Now, you, you would gotta. say you gotta, you got to demonstrate, you, you, you know, you're talking, you know, walk the talk. So if you talk about exercise and you don't do it, it's like a physician in, in those days where you tell people you shouldn't be smoking and they smoke. It's a little bit mm, harder. It's sure. not easy. You're right. Physicians are very busy. But, but you know, it's where you put the emphasis. So we, we know yep. how important it is. Um, yep. So, you know, it's important. Like um, Ted Barnett, as an example, is a good example. Not only he teach class for the general population, anybody, but he has something that is specifically for physicians to enhance their knowledge. And that's mm -hmm. really useful. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, leading by example is not easy. You know, um, it definitely takes... Um, it, it definitely takes uh, a lot of uh, humility is what I've learned. Uh, a lot of humbleness, a lot of humility, and um, just being okay, you know, when, you know, you make missteps, mistakes, and fail, you know, this is where the growth happens. And um, yeah. I think that vulnerability is an important topic, um, you know, to kind of talk about in all realms. Um, and I think that the more vulnerable you become and you know let people know that hey like i'm not perfect but i'm still going to get up and do it you know again you know every single day and try my best and do my best you know essentially uh the message that we want to you know put out there so um in terms of um you know before we get into demonstrate uh demonstrating um you know can you remind our audiences in terms of uh just uh, physical activity guidelines um, for, I mean, you can probably make a whole session out of this because there's so many subsections in terms of recommendations, but um, in terms of like adults, right. Um, and if you don't mind, um, you know, maybe a little bit in terms of like pregnant women, um, if, uh, if you can share with us. 
Well, I mean, the typical recommendation and, and uh, you know, I used to ask my patient just to see, and I'd say that a good 95% of people are unaware uh, of the recommendation. So the recommendation is to do at least 150 minutes uh, of exercise a week, uh, which would be about 30 minutes a day. This is not, uh, this is not comprehensive. This is what we call minimum. Mm. <laughs> you know, it could be uh, 150 minutes of you know easy exercise or 75 minutes of a little bit more uh, active, like hip exercise. So it could be acceptable. Um, that does not necessarily explain what kind of exercise, you know, you can see aerobic exercise, but it is important at least a couple of times a week to include some session that would be more like resistance or weight bearing exercise, mm. which you're going to see that in the general women, especially women population. It's they're, they're usually so much focused on the aerobic exercise. Hey guys, if you are interested in having a consultation with me and actually see me one-on-one, um, the Chef Doc Lifestyle Medicine uh, practice has partnered with plant-based telehealth and uh, we offer uh, lifestyle medicine consultation. So you'll be able to see me one-on-one -on -one and uh, I can go over your health history and seeing what we can do to fill in the gaps. Uh, we can talk about your physical health, anything from food to lifestyle, to diet, to setting up your kitchen, to cooking preparation, to grocery shopping, to your mental health. Um, I think it's important that we build our emotional resilience to talking about your sleep and how to stay hydrated and what are the best uh, medicines if necessary, what are the best supplementations if necessary. And we do all this in a very concise manner and it's a conversation. I take the time out to listen. I take the time out to really understand you from the ground up and to look at all aspects um, of your physical, emotional, and mental health. And uh, please, you know, uh, drop me a line, schedule an appointment if you want to see me one-on-one. -on -one. And um, I am very, very looking forward to learning more about you. And again, thank you so much for visiting uh, here uh, at The Chef Doc. And I'll say, I was like that. I was a marathon runner. You know, why mm -hmm. would I do weight-bearing exercise? I want to run. <laughs> However, when you see yourself growing and getting older, especially when you're a body frame like me, um, who's very thin, you got to make sure that you're careful because then suddenly the risk increases with osteoporosis. So you're going to want to make sure that you maintain your muscle mass. So that's extremely important, even if we don't like it as much. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the bare minimum. Pregnant woman, uh, you know what? I don't think that this specific recommendation is just that what we recommend for women is it's a, it, first of all, majority will think it's probably better not to exercise, which is not true. I always mm. encourage my pregnant woman to, um, you know, keep uh, doing some movement, especially that diabetes is so much prevalent during mm. pregnancy. So activate the muscle really is helping to get the glucose. Uh, and the only thing we tell people is that they, they suddenly are afraid regarding the um, heart rate. And I usually mm -hmm. tell, listen, don't don't look at the heart rate. If you're able to talk to me while you're doing your exercise, you're doing mm -hmm. good. Do not mm -hmm. get stuck. Some people will be at about 150 and still able to talk very easily. And some other, you know, will be out of breath. So it's, it's more regarding, you know, move. The same 30 minutes a day, 150 minutes. The only thing that is important is to make sure you're comfortable when you do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, as a caveat and a disclaimer, always consult with your primary care and OBGYN. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, because we want we want people to be safe at the end of the day. We want people to be safe. We want to prevent injuries. So correct, correct, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes, especially with pregnant women, they often complain of their um, round ligament, you know, in the inguinal region that is very uncomfortable. So you got to be careful with that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to understand. Uh, I cannot tell that OBGYN are very knowledgeable, however, as far mm -hmm. as exercise is concerned. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say <laughs> the caveat is the other side now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one more question before we go to demonstration is what has been um, your favorite uh, race or competition that you've participated in and why? Hmm. Well, that would be a long time ago because I, I ran my last uh, marathon in uh, 83 in Ottawa. 
And the reason was that I was starting medical school after, and I said, yeah, I won't have as much time. So I prepare myself pretty well. And the interesting thing is, you know, nowadays you have your watch, a heart rate and timing. We had none of that. Mm-hmm. None of that. The only thing. You got a stopwatch. That's it. Just a stopwatch. On my hand, I had all at where I wanted to be at five kilometers at 18 kilometers. So I had them all here. And I was running with somebody who was following me. She said, you're the timer. It was really my best race because we were trying to do 315 and we did three hours, 10 minutes. Mm. Best race ever. And my souvenir. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't, ain't going to touch that no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. So, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so let's go into the demo. Um, you know, what are you uh, demonstrating? And, uh, you know, uh, what we want to do is kind of present um, a variety of different things that people would do at home. Um, and so, Dr. Liz is going to demonstrate uh, what have you chosen for us today, and uh, what are you going to demonstrate? So I wanted to make it so that people can do something on their own at self at home without a lot of equipment. So I do have some weight here and we might use one, but very lightweight, surprisingly, it could be pretty difficult. Um, so I'm going to use a band. We can see it in the back. Yep. I'm also going to use the bench. Um, some uh, with the band will be more for the biceps and the bench will be, and hopefully you can see me the way the, yeah. the um, you know, camera is placed. So I wanted mm-hmm. to start maybe with the first one with the, the bench and we'll see, cause I wanted yeah. to do triceps and that one, you can do it at home every day, taking a break from work. So here we go. So I have the bench here and we're just going to do triceps. So the muscle mm-hmm. that I write, you know, at the uh, back of your arm. Yep. So a uh, different position here that you can do. For some people, it's easier if they put their knee like this. Mm-hmm. And for some other, it's going to be extended, which is a little bit harder. Now, mm-hmm. one thing that is very important is you're going to make sure you don't put your shoulder inside. Your shoulder needs to be back. Mm-hmm. Really mm-hmm. important. So, And then you're staying very close to the bench. So you put my hand flat. And I'm going to do it like this to demonstrate. So, and then you let go. So you go down. Mm -hmm. So the lower you go, the harder it's going to be. So you can do a lot of reps. And so you can, you know, if you do it this way, put your legs extended, then obviously it's a little bit harder. Mm. So then that works the tricep. That anybody can do any chair. You don't need a bench. You can do a chair and just keep going. I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you, after 15, you're going to feel your triceps. Mm-hmm. So you can start mm-hmm. with, you know, five, take a break, do five, and then eventually you'll be able to bring it to six, seven, eight, and maybe at the beginning you can't even do five. So that's okay at the mm-hmm. beginning just to go progressively. So that mm-hmm. one would be for the triceps. Those yeah. Right Dr. Liz, um, is there a difference when, because I see your, uh, your hand position with your fingers, um, outwards towards your legs. Does it make a difference when you turn your fingers the other way and have your hand the other way? Well, it's feasible, but it's a little bit harder to mm-hmm. do it this way. Some people will do me. I'd rather do it this way. It's yeah, much gripping the position chair. Mm-hmm. of the hand than mm-hmm. doing it this way. So this position is much easier, but I mean, okay. you need most likely working pretty much the same muscle. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And it, and it looks like extending the legs uh, makes it a little bit more difficult. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. But you know what? It, it's, it's a very uh, good exercise with the tricep that works pretty well. No weight. Don't need to put any weight into this. So that's, mm-hmm. that's one example of the tricep. The other one that was going to use the band, you have choice of different band with tension. So this one would be kind of in, in the middle. The green usually are easier, and then you go to the blue and the black is much more difficult. I have a black, but rarely do I use it because it's other than stretching, it's, it's a difficult one. So when you want to do bicep as an example, you let the cable go down. You can use one or two feet, depending on how much tension you want. So if you want to put a lot of tension, you can put your two feet and put it very short, which would be very hard for me. 
But if I only put one feet, and I'm going to do it this way, and then you can start by flexing the cable. Mm. So then, I don't know if you see well, so you can yep. just doing that, allow you to, and, and then usually it's very good not to just do this, but let it go very slow so that you're mm. working the muscle at the two angles, not only mm -hmm. flexing, but then extending. Yeah. Is it, Dr. Liz, is it important to, when you're flexing the bicep to go at a slow pace and then also when you're lowering it down to go at a slow pace? Well, it allows you to work the two different, so in, in, with, the, with the cable, it's much better to do it slower because it's very hard with the cable to try to go, especially fast when you let go, because then it would be dangerous for you when you mm. let go. It's really, it's, it's pulling down so much. So that allows you to work the two sections, not only the eccentric, but the concentric. So it would be concentric and then the eccentric like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's different, there's so many different moves you could do. Even for the bicep, you can do it crossing like this. Mm -hmm. So it just shows you that you can bring, actually, this is so easy to bring into your luggage when you go. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm showing one example, but there is lots of different ex exercise that could be done. So it's, this is a good example for the biceps. I'm turning around so you can see different angle, but mm -hmm. that's the... And again, depending on how strong you are, you know, if I increase the tension just by putting my two feet, you won't mm -hmm. see that one. But then the band instead of starting high is much lower and then it increased the tension on the uh, cable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. more resistance, a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Not much uh, of uh, equipment when you think yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. And for that, um, you know, it's probably obvious, but keeping your back straight when you're doing that. Exact. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're just doing like this, it won't be as good. So you really have to perform the exercise with a good form. I should mm -hmm. put my other glasses because I can't see you as well. And I can't see you. <laughs> there you go. This is what happened with age. There you go. Now I see you. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll show you one which is with very light weight and therefore people can do it at home with a simple, uh, you know, don't even need to have weight, just a, you know, a, a peanut butter jar for God's sake on both hands. So as yeah, an yeah. example, these are five pounds mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we would think about using it now more for the, for the shoulder. So you can just start it, you know, just this movement, I'll tell you, is far from being easy. So when you do it repetitively, you put it together and then you lift it up, put it together again in good form, and you bring it down. This this move for the shoulder is not an easy one. Ideally, don't go lower because that could be a problem. It, yeah. it hurts and create injuries. So you're trying to stay about at the level. I think better if I do it yeah. this way so you can see it. So you're going this way, coming this way. And just doing this, bringing it together, open up, push it up. So it's all shoulder, the interior portion mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, posterior one. So mm. these, this is a good combination for the shoulder. Mm. And these are only five pounds. Yeah. Even guys that have lots of muscle are usually would have a lot of difficulty to do this exercise with anything heavier than 10 to 12 pounds. You got to mm. have a lot of being able, this movement is not easy to yeah. do with yeah. heavy weight. Yeah, and and they, they, they make them in like two pounds and three pounds as well. So Absolutely. there's always, uh, you can always go lighter, you know, you just have to find it. Uh, exactly, so these ones are even lighter. So I have all sorts of, uh, and all these things that you can use for, you know, just the hand. So the lighter weight are very, very useful too. So don't need to have heavy weight, simple little thing. And again, even if you don't have weight, if you mm -hmm. use a can of, uh, you know, beans of anything you have in your hand while you're watching TV, you can always move, simple. Yeah, thing. yeah. Yeah, you know, like you said, I have a lot more equipment, but I just wanted to demonstrate some simple exercise. Yeah, yeah. So, if you were to do the other one, you know the exercise, so I have a bar here, mm -hmm. and you can do chin-up, you know, people mm -hmm. are doing those, those are tough to do yeah. chin-up. I have something that 
help me to do chin up, but we have something we can do with the with the band that correspond mm-hmm. to the chin up. Yeah. So I want to show it now. I, I will see if this is something you can appreciate it now. Somebody we need to have doesn't have to be a bar like this, but something that they can put the band uh, you know on. And then when you do it, well, I'll try to uh, you tell me if you see it. Yep. So You're a you good angle. Of, you bend like this, and then you would bring it like this. So that that represent what would be a chin up. Mm. But it allows you to work, yeah, the bicep. But there's many other muscle in this one that yeah. you're including. Um, your your back the, muscles, right? The back muscle, the deltoid, the trapezius. So you can do it. But then the opposite could be as good. So you're doing kind of the chin up when you're handled this way. If you flip it. And your hand, and you do it wider, then it's like doing a pull up. And that is done with a simple band. And then you're working quite a bit your back muscle here. Yeah. Hope you see it well. Yep, yep, you're doing great. Yeah, your uh, your back muscles, your latissimus dorsi muscles are like one of the largest group, group muscles. So, and they're so important. So, so important. Here. We always need, um, you know, the importance of having a good posture because we're yeah. so much sitting in front of our computer and therefore doing some simple exercise like this with mm-hmm. a band. This one was not very uh, difficult, um, but it allows you to, you know, stretch and reinforce yeah. these muscles yeah. so that it's a little bit better for you when you work. And I, and I do want to emphasize to people that are watching and listening is that, you know, it's not, you know, we see a lot of things on media and uh, social media, TV, things like that. And, um, you know, people are really into, you know, physique and, you know, bodybuilding and things like that. And for us lifestyle, you know, uh, practitioners, you know, we are striving for prevention of injury. Um, and maintaining function, right? So something as, uh, you know, reaching for a can in a shelf is not going to be, you know, we may take that for granted. And over time, if you don't practice these exercises, you know, you, you know, those will be difficult over time. So it's important to maintain that. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Liz? Absolutely. And then, then for women also, we were talking, I think, a little bit about that. Is this prevention for osteoporosis, maintaining your muscle mass. It doesn't mean being working with heavy weight on that. Um, this elastic band is really a savior. And it's amazing how many different type of exercise you can accomplish with this band. It's really yeah. a, a fun uh, uh, thing to learn, just to learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Do a bike run and send you an episode of Dr. Fontaine on the bike. So. Well, what we could do if uh, if I, if it was feasible is to even being outside. If I can do a bike ride outside, you yep. know, and dip it a little bit. But on on obviously inside here is easy because uh, you know it's stationary and nothing is moving, so I can just. Yeah. End- jump on it and show a little bit of what I do. If it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. I would love that. Good morning, Toy Bites. This is what we do in Vermont when it is snowing, like today. Go on our bike and do some exercise inside. So I use my own bike that is on the trainer and uh, I have my kind of system that has allowed me to develop my own uh, training plan and uh, at the same time watching a little bit of uh, some of the people that are biker that are racing. So just give me the chance to have a little something to uh, have motivation so we can get ready for the summer season. So Dr. Liz, thank you so much, um, you know, for demonstrating. Um, uh, and uh, definitely, it's definitely um, such a, such a, a nice, nice thing to see, you know, when we see physicians, really uh living their lives um but also being a great role model and example for their community you know and 
we desperately need a lot of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And physicians across the board are very hardworking people. Um, and for me, it's like, you know, we can, you know, be a, a such a great, a, a even better example once we are, you know, putting ourselves in that role modeling, you know, space. And um, I still feel that patients, even though they Google everything, um, they still look to us for guidance and, you know, for kind of, kind of like the, uh, what's the expression, you know, where the buck stops in terms of, you know, uh, these types of uh, information guidelines, standard practices, you know, things like that. So. Yeah, I really think uh, we, we don't take it uh, or we take it as granted as physician. People really look for a physician to tell them what might be the best because they are lost. There's so much information. And even if they come with their Google <laughs> companion, mm -hmm. once you tell them what you think is the best, they really listen to the physician, which, uh, you know, I think it is important for physician to, to, uh, you know, take that and teach, to take time to teach your, uh, amazing patient. Of course. Of course. Um, so Dr. Liz, where can people find you? Um, you know, for those that are interested in reaching out, um, booking a session or learning more about, you know, your physical, you know, activity endeavors, uh, where can they find you and reach out to you? Well, I mean, uh, you and I uh, know a little bit more about plantbasedtelehealth.com. So that's where I um, practice with a group of amazing physicians that are teaching people uh, lifestyle medicine, but also how to know better about whole plant-based uh, diet. Um, the state that I practice is Vermont, Michigan, Florida, New York, and West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you can see that when you go on site, you'll be able to see, you know, which state I uh, practice. So mm -hmm. that's the best. Uh, and my other part of myself is coaching physicians. So I have a company with a business partner. We coach physician and healthcare executive in well-being and mm -hmm. uh, leadership. So that's the other, this is the other work that I do. And um, yes. that's, that's fun. <laughs> yes, leaders need leadership as well. <laughs> and they also need coaching as well. So oh, um, I think, uh, I think learning never stops. And, uh, you know, as long as you continue to be humble and, and uh, practice, you know, humility, um, I just think that, you know, so many great things come and we can continue to lead um, and serve the people that we serve. So um, Dr. Liz, thank you so much uh, for being here with us on the show. Um, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for being you know, such a great example uh, for your patients and your community. Uh, my pleasure. It was so nice to have, <laughs> give me the chance to be here. So thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Thrive Bites. If you like this, please sh uh, share, like, and comment and subscribe. And if you felt like this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know as well. And until then, please say goodbye to Dr. Liz. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you like this, please like, follow, and subscribe. And please follow us for the latest updates for this season, season five. And if you feel that this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know. And please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and YouTube. And thank you so much again. And we will see you on the next one.